Welcome. I'm Roy Lindley and I wanted to share with you how I made a successful search for my unknown paternal grandfather. It required lots of computer searching, help from kind people and a lot of luck. I'm new and not very good at voiceover, however I thought it was the best way to share the story with you. In the movie, I take you through nine steps I went through on this journey. The movie is about 10 minutes long, so let's get on with it. I ordered my dad's birth certificate. However, it gave no clues as to who my dad's dad was. Let me tell you a little about my paternal grandma, Gladys Lindley. It was wartime and she was just short of her 23rd birthday when my dad was born. She was one of 11 children. However, as was usual at that time, five had died young. She lived in Holbeck Leeds and had a skilled job in the woolen mills as a burler. Burlers corrected any errors in the cloth. Grandma never shared with any of the family who the father of our dad was. Let's see how I turned to DNA to progress the search. I was new to DNA. However, as the chart shows, 25% of my DNA will be from my paternal grandpa. In fact, you get a random 50% of DNA from each parent. So, for example, my brother Jack and I will have differing DNA from our parents. I took an ancestry DNA test in the hope of matching with others who shared this unknown grandpa's DNA. Let's see how my first venture into DNA test sites went. Firstly, it was a bit of a shock as a Yorkshireman to discover I'm 80% Scottish. It's also a bit overwhelming how many DNA matches I had. Once I got to grips with it, I realised I had to focus on close matches, second cousin and nearer, and it turned out all of these were maternal matches. So despite this being a great site to build a family tree, and do record searches, it wasn't helping in my paternal grandpa search. My DNA knowledge had now increased and I'd learnt that some DNA sites offer chromosome level data and that there was a male only DNA test known as Y-DNA. Y-DNA seemed to be exactly what I was looking for. So let's see how this next step in the journey went. I did a basic Y-DNA test with family tree DNA. I learnt that to narrow down the matches, you need to do a much more detailed Y111 test. This was very expensive. However, I thought it would reveal who my paternal grandfather's relatives were. So I went ahead. My nearest match was Colin Irwin in Australia who was both knowledgeable and helpful. Unfortunately, our common ancestor was probably in the 1700s in Ireland, so we had no chance of finding him. I was at a dead end again. However, I did have a possible surname of Irwin, so I needed to move to a DNA test site that provided chromosome level data and to have a more structured approach. I did a DNA test with my heritage and also asked close relatives, Diane, Margaret and Tony to test too. Having their DNA meant that people who did not match to any of them were likely paternal grandpa matches. I found Kathy and Gabby using this approach. They were both massively helpful and I worked with them to build their family trees to see if we could find a common ancestor. 
Unfortunately, the link was pre-1850 in Ireland, and we couldn't find it. So annoyingly, I was at a dead end again. I'd realised each new DNA site I joined introduced me to a new population of matches. So I did a 23andMe test. On DNA sites, you send a message to a match and hope for a reply. On 23andMe, Michaela replied and did lots of things to help me. She introduced me to her Aunt Velvet and her great Aunt Maggie. They both had extensive family tree knowledge. I was now certain it was Irwin DNA I had inherited from my paternal grandpa. Was this as far as I could get? To get further, my paternal grandpa would need to have had more children and his grandchildren would have to have taken a DNA test on the site I was on. So this was extremely unlikely. However, it was always worth joining more DNA sites to see if I struck lucky. Let's recap. Ancestry DNA didn't have close paternal matches. Y DNA didn't have close genetic distance matches. My heritage had paternal matches, but the ancestral link was too far back. 23andMe got me to the surname of Irwin, but not to the paternal grandpa. What will living DNA reveal? Each new DNA site introduces a new population of people, and in this case I struck gold. I matched to a James Booth whose DNA match to me was so substantial that we must share the same grandpa. However, after initially ignoring all of my attempts to communicate, he eventually shared knowledge of his parents. This quickly led to his and my grandpa, also called James Booth, who was born in Ireland around 1881. Michaela again helped by loading her DNA to living DNA, which proved this was my paternal grandpa. We could find no Irwin connection to Grandpa James Booth. The only answer is James was illegitimate and his dad was an Irwin. Whilst the DNA is clear, we had no connection between Grandpa James Booth and my grandma Gladys Lindley. A breakthrough on this was to come soon. The picture is of Roger Booth, my half first cousin, Irene Jackson, my dad's half sister and my auntie, with me in Irene's home. Roger made an amazing discovery in Grandpa James Booth's army records. Before she married, Grandma Gladys Lindley reached out to the army to find the whereabouts of James Booth, but they were unable to help. Our romantic view of this is she loved him, and he never knew of my dad's existence. Thus my search is over with an amazing result. Well, if you've reached here, you've survived my voiceover and finished the story. I hope it's been interesting and that you understand just how lucky I was to find such helpful people and to succeed in my search. I now have new relatives to get to know.